We're here with Kaylee, the founding and founder and editor of Cancer Wellness Magazine. Could you tell us a little bit about Cancer Wellness Magazine, why it was started, the need? Certainly. Uh, my background actually is um, in a law firm, and so my husband and I run a law firm called Vogelsang Law, and we specialize in mesothelioma. My husband's been in it for about 20 years. I've been around for about 15 of those. And so in the firm, we see a lot of cancer patients and a lot of people really in late stage. And just um, in those interactions, I would find that people really didn't have a place to turn, didn't, have, didn't feel like they had available resources. And so it actually started as a small resource guide. I thought it was going to be 10 pages or so, but that didn't last for too long. Um, as we began sort of talking about the resource guide and reaching out to people, it became very evident that not only was this a situation in terms of in terms of lifestyle that people are really looking for um, within our clientele base, but uh, that it really had a broader appeal to the greater cancer community. Um, as I would hear again and again that you know everyone's going through a lot of the same stuff, even if they're different cancer types. Which, um, not having had cancer personally, that was. Uh, that was a big insight, and I think that the, the um, concept for the publication grew as a direct result of that. So what are the, the high-level wellness subjects that people are really interested in? Certainly. So we, um, we stick to a handful of topics that we are sort of evergreen in our every single issue. And so uh, we always talk about destination travel. People love, love the idea of travel. If you can... If you can go and find benefits somewhere else, I think it's great for the mind, the body, the soul, and it's very human. So uh, we look at that. We always look at cancer in the environment because the uh, impact of that these days is undeniable and, and uh, also um, sort of intersects with my background with a firm. Um, and we deal with cooking. People love cooking videos. So we have we have a dietitian who comes up with recipes and we, um, we create cooking uh, videos. So I would say those are among the top. And then, and then um, fashion, people are so, especially women, uh, we love fashion period. And then um, uh, you have the beauty and the fashion kind of stripped away or people can oftentimes feel like that. So I feel like it's my job to hunt down the, the stuff that we can and um, reintroduce those elements back into, back into um, that person's life. So you brought up a few key things. One is that individuals with, with cancer or touched by cancer still travel. They're still looking for their wellness destinations and they're going for the same reasons, correct? For yes. someone who doesn't have cancer, so. Yes, definitely that drooling and wanderlust that I personally have for almost whenever I open a beautiful travel magazine. That, that's just something that's very human and I think that um, we want an escape. We want a break, and it makes it perhaps even more uh, elevated for those who are going through their cancer journey because that um, concept of being pampered, perhaps, perhaps escaping, perhaps changing one's perspective, is so vital. Okay, so so that's a key key element. And at many resorts, people can learn how to cook. They can take their first yoga class. They can do mindfulness meditation. So they don't have to do these things in hospitals or support groups. There is a role that we can play on the bigger aspect of wellness. A hundred percent. And I think that um, people are kind of tired of the hospital. Uh, they've been through a lot, and so finding some some elements that have the medical expertise. Um, and some, some uh, organizations that do, and the training, I have gone through some training as, of course. Yes. Um, so um, today we're talking about fashion and beauty, and uh, we did have an interview with Cancer Fashionista, but I'd like to hear from you, uh, from your, your readers, mm -hmm. or from the events that you do, what is the gap right now? Why is there this, this shift right now that we're seeing on Instagram and, and different terminology and people you know, taking pictures of themselves while sure. they're going through? What's going on? Well, I think uh, overall we're all social media hounds and that's just part of the, uh, the environment these days. But it has offered this new platform for people to express themselves and to share things that um, aren't necessarily pretty. So I think I think the, uh, the beauty in um, social media is really that 
that uh, there is that ability to communicate openly about your fears, about your loves, and, and certainly uh, when it comes to self-image, I think social media pretty much has a, a monopoly on that front. So you've been to the Global Wellness Summit, you're Indeed. involved in the Global Wellness Institute. What, what nuggets or what information can we give to the audience to better understand how we can communicate more effectively, whether it's through imagery or word choices to individuals to help change and craft this new lens? So I think, uh, and I love that idea of crafting a new lens. Um, I, I, Cancer Wellness um, is really, really interested in creating a new look for a uh, look of cancer. And I think there's so many people in the world, so it's not necessarily coming from my publication. Sure. Uh, it, it's really coming from, from the uh, larger population. And people are, are just thirsty for this, for this type of information. Um, and are also willing to put in uh, put it, some skin in the game themselves. And so I think perhaps some of that skin that you're seeing when people take off their clothes and are showing their stories, you know, that for me that shows skin in the game. And that means that we have a, a very we have a large, unfortunately, population of people who are seeking answers, but who are very actively doing so. And I think that that's the change, and that's um, more of the face of the new cancer community as we are as we're coining it. Um, is a, a community of empowered people who are who are actively seeking solutions um, in in uh, the areas of wellness in general, but certainly beauty and fashion um, yeah. are, are certainly centered. And lastly, clean beauty I know is a hot issue for you. Yes. Uh, could you just let us know what is clean beauty from your viewpoint and your readership? Sure. Uh, so this has been pretty tough because uh, and very confusing. Not for our editorial team necessarily, but uh, really for the general population. And so we have uh, begun to take it on and begun to, to um, uh, curate a list of ingredients that we do not, um, that we will not get behind. So if a product contains ingredients um, and it's not our list, we call uh, our, our, the products that we do choose and do select, we call those um, CW approved, and so we've we've uh, we're we're at the beginning stages, and we actually look to uh, organizations like the Global Wellness Institute to help us uh, cultivate some of those. Okay. And lastly, one of the things that we are doing is we have launched a survey through Cancer Wellness Magazine to ask individuals about their skincare regimen, if they've changed it during treatment, after treatment, who do they go to, is it a sales rep, is it an esthetician, is it an infomercial, what is their price point, are they looking for an oncology type brand. And so as soon as we compile all those global, data sources, we will like to feed that back to the industry so that you can make a more informed decision on how to help your clients. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.